Some people perceive you as enjoying every food you try. Are you a faker? Welcome back to the second channel. Today, we're getting the inside scoop from the leading travel food YouTuber. He's got over 6.3 million subscribers and over 1 billion views on his channel. His name is Mark Weems. Let's call him up now and see how he's doing. Boom, calling. Boom, <laughs> I've got Mark Weems on the ringer. Mark, how you doing? What's up, Sonny? People mainly want to know, okay, uh, how do you stay fit? Does your wife ever get to eat? What's the best country? So we're gonna skip all those questions. You're used to going to, I would guess, maybe 12 to 20 different countries a year. Care. Right now, you're stuck in Thailand. Can you tell us what is the current corona situation in Thailand? As of now, things have pretty much fully reopened. Aside from international travel, we can't be planning our next trip to the next country. But at the same time, it's been interesting to focus on Thailand. I've always had a huge list of things to do in Thailand, but I've always been like, I live in Thailand. Mm. I can come back for that. Do you feel like your creativity has been squashed? No, not at all. In the last 12 years, I really haven't stopped to just think. So we're gonna head to the top of this thing, and I hope all the food I've been eating doesn't come back. I see it as potentially new ideas. So it's been a time to reflect. It's been a time to contemplate new ideas, spending time with family. It's been a time for me to learn and grow, I think. It's nice to have some time for the first time in 12 years to kind of take a breather, mm -hmm. be with your family. I want to hear from you a little bit more about what it was like coming up. I started off blogging, you know. Mark Weens, <laughs> Migrationology.com. It was just a way to remember the things I ate, the places I visited while I traveled. And it wasn't for a year or so when I decided decided to try putting a little Google ad onto the blog. I think I made something like two cents. I was like, wow. So if I can keep doing this, maybe it has potential to be able to make a living doing something I love doing, which is traveling and eating. Maybe sometime after that, I thought, when you're just taking photos or writing, you can't feel the emotion of the food. <laughs> oh, wow. One of the great things about street food is that you're there where the food is being cooked. The motorbikes, the cars are whizzing past. You hear the sights and sounds as you're eating. And so I was like, oh man, video is only going to grow from here. So that's when I said I'm going to commit to making videos right now. I mean, did you have any idea that this would pay off eventually? I didn't have an idea. I didn't have a goal. It was more, let me commit myself right now to publishing two videos per week. I have no idea what will happen. Well, I think that's the best type of goal because it is something that you can 100% control. Now, did you break even when you were blogging or did it take kind of crossing over onto YouTube and monetizing there to actually bring in enough revenue where you could break even? The bigger breakthrough was writing an ebook. Over two years or a year and a half, I had collected a database of photos of every single Thai dish that I ate. So I thought maybe I should just put all this together in an organized PDF ebook and be able to have a product. From the business perspective, that was a breakthrough that I was able to have a product to be able to sell, to be able to earn an income. And at that time, I was now relying on still savings from English teaching, as well as now the new income source, which was the website and especially the eBooks. So I had that stream of online income, which allowed me to pivot into making videos where I wasn't making anything, but allowed me to invest my time into learning how to make videos and commit to making videos twice a week. How many years from the start until you were like actually making money? Mine especially was a very, very slow growth. I think it probably took two years before I was making a little bit of money. I mean, that's a lot of patience. You know, a lot of people talk about, hey, uh, how do I make money? How long does it take to make money? And it's like, you're already done. Like, just don't start. Because if that's your mindset, you're gonna be so disappointed when year two, you're making like $14. Early on too, I was like, I'm not gonna ever put advertisements on YouTube, so I don't want people to be inconvenienced. I'm gonna find some other way to make money. Uh, well, that didn't work out. Now we've got like 15 ads in this video. Oh, here's one right now. At what point did you realize you had kind of reached success? The most encouraging thing and the most rewarding thing is when you were able to really help somebody do something, whether that mm. be get out of their comfort zone, whether that be they went to the restaurant that you went to. When I started to receive messages like that, I started to realize the potential and the value of doing this. <laughs> For me, that's what I would define as success. Oh, wow, I was gonna go with money, but that, I like yours too, that's more heartwarming. I mean, I mean, on the money side, I had a girlfriend at the time who 
who is now my wife. And now, of course, I have a kid as well. So financially speaking, my goal of success was to be able to support a family doing this. Once I was there, that was the peak for me, I think. How old is your son? He's now three and a half. When I was 28, I tried curry for the first time and it was like a heavenly explosion in my mouth. And I fear that your child is never gonna have that type of experience because your kid's palate's gonna be burned out by oh, the time they're 10. <laughs> um, I'm just, it's, not, it's not a real question. <laughs> How did becoming a father make you better as a human? Almost in every way possible. Over the years, I mean, from different experiences, I thought everything was the biggest change in life. I feel a little queasy right now, so I'm eating a biscuit. Up until having a kid, it's an entire lifestyle change. And I'm still learning, of course, every single day. Before having a kid, you're selfish with your time, you know, you're selfish with yourself. Mm. But the moment your kid comes into the world, every moment is important. You know, you want to bring your kid up in the correct way, He's going to be an eater. Care for them, do everything for them, teach them. The fridge, the kitchen counter, the stove. At the same time, of course, you still have to keep on working to support your family. So I've learned a lot. Switching gears a little bit, you are by far one of the most hardest working people I've ever met. While being Thank one you. of the most optimistic people I've ever met, we have a, a nice contrast together because I'm very cynical. You're very optimistic <laughs> about everything. What I want to ask though is, you know, we have these jobs that are very cool jobs. The question is, what is a part of your job that is really difficult that people might not realize? Really what's on camera is just a fraction of what goes in behind the scenes. The filming, the editing, coming up with fresh ideas continually. Also one of the challenges is that once you start making videos for YouTube, there's never an end. <laughs> unless you, I mean unless you choose to end. I've been doing two videos a week since 2011. Content, research, marketing. It's a continuous circle that just never ends. That kind of tastes like garlic and onions. And so you're constantly absorbed into it. That's been the difficult thing for me, especially while having a family. How do you find that balance where you're actually having time to hang out with your family and your kid? <laughs> you working on that still? That's something I'm still working on. That's something I'm still learning. That's something my wife helps me with for sure. For me, it's been, I mean, acknowledging knowing that my family is the most important Thing. Some people perceive you as enjoying every food you try. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's really going on, Mark Wiens? Are you a faker? Am I a fake? I'm a very non picky eater. I really enjoy a huge spectrum of different food. What more could you ask for? My entire philosophy of food vlogging or food videos is for me to describe the food as best I can. The richness of the rice. At the same time, it's so like fluffy and light. Yeah. What's in this dish? What are the ingredients? How was it made? And the person, the viewer, you watching can then look at that dish and then decide, is that a dish for me based on the ingredients and the process? Most of the big food channels we see now are owned by giant corporations like Eater, Bon Appetit, Munchies, First We Feast. Meanwhile, while you get more eyeballs than all those channels. But you're not in this like buddy buddy club of all the people in LA who have YouTube channels who feature on each other's shows. Do you ever feel left out of that foodie YouTube circle? No. Actually, I'm so happy to be where I am to be able to spend time with my family while doing this. So no, I don't, I don't feel left out at all. Let's ask a couple of audience questions now. Uh, Sean B. In says, how long does it take to edit those videos? So are you still editing your own videos? Sometimes I have some editors. Now I'm I'm editing, yeah. There's like 12 people on my team. Whenever I do videos showing my team, they'll just be like, Mark Weens doesn't have a team. <laughs> <laughs> Go f yourself. Mark Weens is a machine. I don't know. What do you expect? <laughs> I still like editing. It's fun yeah. for me. For a main video, it could take anywhere from 12 to 20 hours. We talked about how you came up, how you got to where you you are now and some of the challenges you face. For the people watching who are interested in doing a similar type of job, they love the idea of what, at least what they see on the screen, traveling, eating food. What is your advice to somebody who wants to try to go down the path you went down and to get to where you are today? First of all, I would say that you don't need to have any experience. I started with a small point and shoot. Just begin where you have means to begin. Some of the most important things are finding a way to help viewers, whether that be them finding this food and giving them the information to be able to go to that restaurant. There's so many different styles, but my goal is always to bring the viewer into the situation so it feels like they're there having the experience. Oh, wow. You have to develop your own style of what you like, and it doesn't come by just thinking, it comes by doing. So the only way to figure that out, I think, is to do it. Uh, keep making videos, practice, and there's no right or wrong, it's just your own. So do that and then be persistent. Publish consistently, which is gonna help you 
grow. Don't worry about the viral content or finances at the beginning, but invest your time into producing content that you really believe in that's really honest for you. I love it. All right, Mark, thank you Yo. again so much for your time. Thank you for joining me and for being so open and honest with all your answers. Appreciate it. Thank that. you, man. Thank you for having me. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Oh, okay. peace. Thanks for watching. Nailed it. All right, thanks, Mark.